Kante does a job, Renato Sanchez as well. Despite not having amazing defensive stats, he's got the pace. So obviously pace is very important in all aspects of the field. Literally every position, I look for someone with pace. And in midfield, I look for stamina. It's very important, having a box-to-box -box midfielder. And again, it's you would love to have two hullets in midfield. <laughs> if that was possible, I'd love that. But it's, it's not. And I say the next best thing is just looking for somebody that can offer, I guess, just a box-to-box -box role or... A box of box well, but have higher defending than the likes of Bruno Fernandes. Well, the winner's bracket final is among us right now. I should say the loser's bracket final, in fact. Winner of this will be playing Ooston in the grand final. Oli Bully kicking from left to right, part of Team Makers. And it's going to be Diogo Pocheto from Team BDS from right to left in the Portugal strip. Very interesting so far, you would say. Well, we've only seen Diogo play one match. Uh, he, he lost 3-0. Not too much to really take away from that game. Oli Bully, on the other hand, we've seen probably more FIFA from him in this tournament than anybody else. He went to penalties against Co uh, Cosim uh, Cosimo. Uh, and then also that match there against Adriman. Very intriguing to see. Yeah, I feel like it's gone. Almost, almost a chance there, sorry. I feel like it's, it's unfair to, to, for Diogo to, for us to judge that his ability based on that performance against Ouston. Ouston played a flawless yeah. game, in all honesty, both, defensi both defensively and offensively. And for Diogo, he'll be hoping to bounce back from that. He knows how good he is. He mentioned in the, the preview how good he is defensively. Despite in that performance against Ouston, he conceded three goals. But not, that's not to say... Conceding three goals against Ouston is honestly not even a bad thing because the thing is he always uh, prospers with his attack rather than defence. It's just that he was lacking that offensive threat. He was kind of predictable. And he knows that he'll have to step it up against Oli Bolly. Absolutely, yeah. Just so I was saying, we've seen more FIFA from Oli Bolly than any other competitor. And one yeah. thing that I'm really going to take away from those performances that we've seen from from him so far he seems to be a second leg player all of his sort of wins where he's winning the matches he's coming in the second leg he's peaking towards the end of the game do you read too much into that is he taking the sort of information in the first leg and reacting then in the second leg chance here for Diogo Pochotto slowly coming in hull it with a, a couple of step overs there on the edge of the box into CR7 now good defending from Oli Bolli to clear his lines yeah, um, just following on from what you said, I feel like he mentioned as well like the, he, there's obviously connection issues because players are playing from the, the conference of their own home, so no connection is going to be perfect as it would be at a line event. So he sort of uses the first leg to get used to it, and it almost led to a chance there. But it's, it, there's also that you have to take into uh, to account there's so many factors when playing against somebody, especially if you've played them before. And you just don't want to give the game away too early where he says he knows well, they don't know each other completely. Like obviously they don't play on a day to day basis. But when you've played somebody on a, on a consistent basis at high level competitions, you sort of have a gauge of what they're going to do in certain moments. And you don't want to fall into any traps to give them an easy advantage. Absolutely. Yeah. A chance here for Diogo down this left hand side, just running out of play there with his attacker. 22 minutes gone so far. Nothing to shout about as of yet in this Losers bracket final. Ball out wide, sprayed from CR7. Maybe not the best of passes, but does play out wide to Neymar. Back inside to Patrick Vieira now. Marcus Rashford looking to turn. Just goes backwards into Vieira and now slowly starting to build up through the thirds is Oli Bolly, but a good interception from Nelson Semedo. Greg interception. I feel like this game is going to be very nervy from both of these players where they know there's a lot on the line. They've both accomplished top three at, at least in this event. And which is, it comes, a, you get a lot of prize money for it. You get points, which is valuable to try and reach the playoffs this year because on PlayStation, there's no divine right that you're going to reach another event. With so many competitors who even miss out on this event, we've got the world champion, Wild, but not even here. There's so many top players who will find it difficult to reach events consistently you have to remember it's the top oh. six amongst at 1024 and it's amazing oh absolutely the the instinctive nature from Oli Bolly right there as soon as he got into that scenario he knew that the bridge touch was the next move almost chest like you could see the maneuvers happening before his very eyes he was two steps ahead he knew when he gets that, that, into that position the next thing he has to do is the bridge touch. And a great finish from R9. He's mastered the bridge touch, I'll be honest. Both Oli Bolli and also Ole Lito, both Swedish players with the name Oli, have both play, uh, have both mastered the bridge, in my opinion, when I've seen them play. And it's, it's an extremely difficult skill move to defend, especially on the angle, as I always mention, when you've got the likes of R9, you can just push it past the defender when they're flat-footed. They sort of, like, freeze. 
and it's near enough impossible that for them to backtrack unless you sort of predict it or you've got someone that has good acceleration like Kyle Walker and it gives them the, the lead against Diogo in this game. Yeah, absolutely. Just a, a real work of art there with that bridge touch. <laughs> you, it sort of, when you see that Oli Bolli and both Oli Lito have mastered that, you now start to put the pieces together and the, the puzzle yeah. starts forming that they're sparring partners and play a lot against each other in Sweden. But Diogo looking to get his first goal on the board here in this EU qualifier. Top three finish guaranteed for him. Cristiano Ronaldo looking to get the seconds off the Neymar shot, but just ricocheting into the body of Oli Bolli's defenders. Quite a high line from Diogo from what I'm seeing so far, Ryan. Very high line, and I, I like that because it, it shows that he's trying to press up the pitch, trying to retrieve the um, ball, trying to, yeah, trying to retrieve the ball as soon as he loses it. And I know it's a lot of pros do that as well. I know Shells plays with 10 depth as well, and it's a thing where it sort of suits people. It's it's like having pressed on possession loss, but not having it on at the same time. Yes. So you could have a high line, and then you can flick on team press. You can squeeze them out of the pitch and force your opponent into making a mistake. And when he does, your attackers are literally right there on the edge of the box or in the box to capitalise on. Yeah, it. it's quite a risky way of playing. But if you can, if you if you can, if you get to master it, I'll say, and you get to really get comfortable with playing with your defence high up the pitch and team press constantly being flicked on and off. It's a very, I'd even say, OP way of playing because you get suffocated when you're trying to play out of that you can't find passes you can't find passing lanes to play out of and at the end of the day you just end up hitting it along the ball comes straight back at you yeah exactly this year as I say there's a lot of variation with tactics I don't think there's one exact way to play like on I think last year there was a specific way to play um, we just kind of soak up the pressure and hope to, to get a counter attack or a or something favourable that works for you. But this year, as I mentioned, there's people that play with 10 depth, there's people that play with 1 depth, there's people that play with standard tactics or press on possession loss, press on heavy touch. And I, that's the, I sort of like that. It's not as varied as I'd like. I sort of I sort of like it where there's a lot more options, but I still can't complain because it's a lot more than last year, in my opinion. Absolutely. Diogo looking to get back in this game. Certainly got the talent on the pitch, and we know that he... Is a very talented FIFA player himself. He's not in the top three in Europe for nothing. Kante now playing back to Rude Hully. Looking to create something with Cristiano Ronaldo now. A couple of step overs. Elastico inside the box, just running into the brick wall that is Rafa Varan. That was great defending. Great attacking as well, to be fair. He done well. He bided his time. He tried to wait for a perfect opportunity to get a shot off. But the defending there was very, very impressive, to be honest. And again, you can see that these opponents, they, they know each other, whether it's playing against each other or being able to study the thing. That's the that's the thing now with the, the regional events where you've got two weeks. If you make it into the top six, you've got two weeks to sort of analyze your opponents who are going to make it or who are who have also qualified as well. So it, that's sort of favorable in one sense. Just coming up on... 57 minutes gone in this tie so far. Patrick Vieira now moving forward with the ball for Oli Bollies. I wouldn't say in cruise control, but he's certainly in a favourable position right now. And that gets sprung over the top from Patrick Vieira. Looking to get Marcus Rashford in behind just in the end. Runs out of play. Great pressure from Thurl and Mendy back there. Short goal kick played out from Diogo and looking to spring that ball over the top yet again. Through balls are a, a real important way of getting from defence into attack very quickly this, Ryan, uh, this year, Ryan. I'll get your opinion on when, and when to use through balls just after this attack is over. Into Neymar on the edge of the box, looking to turn, looking to twist but Joe Gomez wins it back. So talk to me about through balls. When do I want to be hitting the through ball or when do I want to be trying to keep possession? You sort of, for me anyway, you trigger the through ball instantly for your attackers. You don't necessarily have to play the ball. You can use it as a decoy run so your opponent switches cursor and starts running away to try and block the, block the through ball, which allows you to have space because no one's pressing you. So you can sort of transition that way. Or if the opponent doesn't change, you can just spray the ball forward. You sort of Uston, he's, as I say, mastered it, if, if anything. He's one of the very few players who I've seen. You could even be tracking the run, but he knows the perfect time to play the through ball and this is a chance here and it's a goal here for Oli Bolli that's a fantastic work goal R9 Ronaldo who else 
What a move. What a move from R9 Ronaldo. It, just that turn of pace. As soon as he gets past you, it's a little bit clunky, R9. We all say it when the ball's at his feet. But when the ball's in front of him, yeah. when he's running onto it, he's got the body strength. He's got the body type. He is so hard to get off of it. And I tell you what, in that position, on the angle, is the more of a reliable striker than R9 Ronaldo? I don't think so. He's so powerful, as you said, when he's in full stride. He can power the shot into the corner. And as you said, the, the, most, the most lethal striker, I have to be honest. I, I love CR7, but R9 is so reliable in front of goal on either foot. We sort of set him ahead, but it's just about getting him into those moments. And it's, it's those moments are few and far between in competitive games. You don't always get that chance because a lot of players, they sort of, they would rather allow you to, to have another opportunity with the likes of Mbappe and Neymar. Despite how good they are, they'd rather give that up than allow Arna Ronaldo a shot on either foot. But he done well there to open up the space with the skill moves, with everything, with the movement, the dribbling, to give him the two-goal advantage. And that right there is why R9's in the squad as well, because and he, he might get one or two opportunities in a game, but those opportunities, that's what you pay the coins for. That's what you, you save up for. He's the big premium purchase, because when he gets the opportunity in the final third, you can back him, you can rely on him, you can give him the ball in a tight area, he'll be able to do something fantastic. And just the composure and the consistency of scoring goals is like nobody else. Speaking of him, on the ball here, playing into Bruno Fernandes, who's been a very strong player in the squad so far. That's a fantastic Elastico inside the box from Cristiano Ronaldo. Ole Bolli is starting to turn on the flare right now. Starting to turn on the flare, definitely. It was a fantastically worked chance there. Very good defending, though, to, to, I guess, recover from the mistake he made of pulling out a defender. And we also spoke about, I want to touch on with Mike LaBelle, where he mentioned Davies as well being used. And it's interesting to see Oli Bully using him left midfield. He can, he's so versatile. He can play anywhere. He's, Mike also mentioned how some people sub him on in, in the center of defense, left back, right back. I sub him on personally in center mid. He's so fast. He can cut the lanes manually extremely quickly compared to Renato Sanchez, even though he's quick, but 90, I think it's 98 pace and his roll to the final card is crazy. And it, there's a chance. Yeah, here. Ronaldo again putting Walker on his bum, Davis now inside the box, looking for him to turn. Not really you want to shoot with Alfonso Davies. I thought there was an opportunity to shoot there with Ronaldo across the keeper for a second. Yes, yeah, so did I. Diogo needs to get firing in the attacking third. If there's anywhere where you, you sort of pointing the finger and saying that's where he might have lacked a little bit it is in the attacking third in creating chances in creating clear cut chances this could be one of those right now but Rafa Varane stepping out of the back four yet again he's, as he always seems to do I, I would probably say the most capped player in competitive teams is, is Rafa Varane R9 Ronaldo looking to play into CR7 but just as I say it who is there? Rafa Varane <laughs> Rafa Varane the man but I thought that was a, a chance there. I felt like that was about to be 3-0. But this is a, in a moment like this, he, well, Diogo has possession of the ball. I say he, he just has to go for it now. Just as It's the last kick of the game pretty much. If he gives away possession, I doubt he'd concede from it. But he just has to try and just push a few more players forward and hope he can get that last kick of the game, which will result in a goal. This could be it right now. Neymar on the edge of the box, twisting, turning, getting a little bit of space is the Brazilian. Vieira comes across, looking for the back post, and it's just Ooh. skimmed across the grass. And that will do Oli Bully for the first leg. Good opportunity there for Diogo at the end of that.